Hi everybody. We're here today at the South Bay Associates Vermilion Show, which is held every year at the nursery here in, in Torrance, Rainforest, Flora. And um, I'm going to show you guys some of the different tillandsias here that were entered in the show this year. So this is a very nice blooming tillandsia zero graphica, and you can see the inflorescence. It doesn't have any flowers on it right now, but the flowers are a pale lavender color. It's in subgenus Tillandsi, which means that the, the uh, stamens and the stigma stick out from the blue floral tube, the lavender floral tube. This is a really nice single tectorum. This is a beautiful clump of tectorum. Uh, this is pretty amazing. Whoever has this, uh, yep, Ken and Jackie Johnson, they probably had this for at least 20 or 30 years, I would guess. This is this is old. And um, this is a bi-generic. This is a Breeze Landia, probably made by John Arden. And it's a hybrid of a Breezia and a Tillandsia, two different subgenera that have been successfully crossed. That's not an easy thing to do. You can see the inflorescence is compound. There are multiple spikes. The spikes are disticus. They're flat. And there aren't any flowers on it right now, but you can see all the color, and I'm sure this lasts for months. Then we have a Tillandsia edithi. This is a Bolivian species, and you can see how long it is. This is really nice. It's um, been growing for many years. It just finished flowering. It has a coral-colored flower that's basically the same color as these uh, flower spikes. This is a Tillandsia betty. Tillandsia betty is Xerographica and Brachycollis. And you can see all the flowers on this one. And this is typical for subgenus Tillandsia. The Xerographica, which is one of the parents of this, and the Brachycollis both have basically the same flower. You have the floral tube with three petals. That's called the corolla. And then you have the anthers. And at the end of the anthers are the yellow pollen grains. And then you have the stigma, the white stigma that sticks out from the anthers. And this, this is the female part of the flower. So if you take the pollen from the, uh, from the anthers and you put it on the stigma of a different plant, that's how you pollinate it. So this one is a uh, Tillandsia without a name. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. It's shaped very much like a Tillandsia secunda, but and it may be a well no. See here's the inflorescence, le what's left of it. But it looked I'm not like, sure what it was. It looks like the inflorescence got broken. I thought secunda too, Paul. Yeah, maybe secunda. Who knows? This is a Tillandsia albida. It's a Mexican species. You can see the beautiful red inflorescence. It's very tall. I got to stand up straight. <laughs> and, um, and then here's another subgenus, Tillandsia corolla, but you can see that this is a very pale green rather than the blue that's typical of so many of them. And then we have a beautiful Eichmea nudicollis uh, hybrid, and it's in the genus Eichmea, which is a different genus, obviously. It's got three wonderful offsets coming off. These are stoloniferous, that means that they come out on a runner. The new plants will be separated by distance from the mother plant. And one of the characteristics of Eichmia nudicollis is that the leaf sheath has wrinkling on it. Uh, and it, it, it's kind of a crinkling, wrinkling effect. And all the Eichmia nudicollis is happening. And then we have a Tillandsia, this is Tillandsia tenuifolia bonzel beauty. And it's been grown for many years into a series of clumps. And when it blooms, it has brilliantly bright pink flower spikes with white flowers. Hey everybody, we're here for phase two. We've moved the camera and now we're set up again. This is a beautiful clump of Tillandsia dura. And you can see the, uh, it's not in bloom at this moment. It has a, a flat, complement, uh, kind of a red spike on it. And uh, okay. these are not blooming, but it's, well, here's an old one right here. See, this is, this is what the inflorescence looks like. And you can see that uh, it's a beautifully grown clump, uh, George and Gina Laria. Uh, very, very nice. This is a clump of fasciculata. There are many, many forms of fasciculata. And I don't know which one this one is. 
but uh, you can see the multiple spikes and you can see some of the flowers here. This is a just open flower. This is a flower that was blooming yesterday. This was maybe the day before that, but uh, they last for a day. Typical subgenus Talansia. Three plants in a pot. It's grown as a terrestrial. You can see that there's orchid bark and uh, uh, pumice. So it's a loose draining mix, which is really key for Talansias. If you want to put them in a mix, they have, the water has to really kind of go through them fast. You don't want water sitting in there or they can rot. Okay? Um, this one is a hybrid of Talansia flabellata. Again, you have the subgenus Talansia flowers on it. Beautiful bright red spikes, many spikes. Uh, fairly stiff leaves. Flabellata has soft leaves. And this is a, a hybrid cross with a, a mother plant that has a um, has rather stiff leaves. It could be con color, uh, it could be a fasic, it could it's be something else. It's con color, it's a John Arden plant. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well, then I guessed. <laughs> but you guessed right. Okay. And this is a Talantia capitata. Oh, oh, loud. <laughs> Sorry. This is a form of Talansia capitata. There are many, many forms of capitata, like there are many forms of fasciculata. This is probably silver rose, uh, which is a species that grows in Guatemala. And you can see that it's, it's past bloom, but it had a beautiful rose-colored blush to it. That's why we call it the silver rose. It's been grown for many years in this beautiful pot. And there are probably 30 plants in there now. Wow. They're really crowding each other. This is Talantia Jalisco Montacola, which is a Mexican species. It has very large inflated spikes. You can see how fat these spikes are very fat, and they get the same blue subgenus Talansia flowers that so many of them get. And this is a beautiful specimen. It's at least well, it's well over a meter wide, well over three feet wide, and uh, quite tall. And it hasn't started to bloom yet. And when it does bloom, it will probably bloom for three or four months. It will keep this beautiful orange and light yellow-green color up to a year. It's amazing. It lasts for a very long time. This is a hybrid. I'm not familiar with this one. I'm trying to yell here. Uh, it says Talantia Butyl Spockery by Flavamata. A lot of color in the spikes. Typical subgenus Talantia flowers. And it also is grown in a pot. This one is grown in a pot with pea gravel which is a good idea because the plant is large, the pot is small, the weight of the pea gravel will hold it down. So, okay, this is Talansia distica major. Again, many forms of distica. It comes from Peru and Ecuador, and distica uh, comes from the word di, which means two. Disticus is a botanical term meaning two-sided, as opposed to poly from the Greek, holisticus, which means many. So. This was named in the 1800s, and um, this is the, the spent inflorescence on it. The characteristics of Distica Major are that it is gray, uh, it gets fairly large, and it's stoloniferous. You can see that there's a runner that comes out of the mother plant. It's also orthotropic. It grows up towards the light. So if the plant is growing down at all, the, the offsets will turn around and they'll grow up towards the, uh, towards the light source. So this is Distica Major, and this is a hybrid, uh, beautiful plant of uh, a form of Capitata and probably uh, Fasciculata. The leaves are pretty stiff, which would be the Fasciculata part. There are multiple spikes, which would also come from Fasciculata, but the color and, and the lack of an inflorescence is the Capitata. Uh, Fasciculata will have a big inflorescence like the one that I showed you over there, uh, or like the Jalisco Monacola, but the Iantha, the Brachycolis, the Capitata, none of those have really much of an inflorescence, and they truncate. They stop the development of whatever hybrid they're made with. That's one of the trade-offs. They, they shorten the inflorescence, but they usually add a lot of color, which is why people use it. You can see the color in this beautiful hybrid here. 
folks, here's another fasciculata type. And again, I don't know which one it is, but you can see how beautiful the inflorescence is. Many, many spikes with lots of color. Many, many leaves that are graceful and recurving. And there are three plants in this clump that are all flowering at the same time here. Fabulous clump. And next we have uh, Ted and Jackie Johnson's uh, coup de gras plant. This is in the show here every year. It just gets bigger from year to year. And this is Tillandsia juncifolia. I don't believe it's officially described, but it's been in the trade for decades now, and that's what everybody calls it. But it has bright green leaves with red tips, and it's stoloniferous. It, again, it sends out runners before it puts out the offsets. So when you start with one plant, as beautiful as that is, over the years, you can develop big clumps like this. Good form of capitata. You can see all the variegation. Uh, variegation is very rare in Tillandsia, and because there's no chlorophyll, or not very much chlorophyll, it grows much more slowly. The variegation, the white, means that there is no chlorophyll. Plants have two, two pigments. Uh, they have anthocyanin, which is the color that attracts pollinators, and they have um, uh, chlorophyll, which attracts the, which photosynthesizes and creates the energy for the plant. So a plant like this doesn't have as much chlorophyll and therefore it doesn't grow as quickly. And Paul, the anthocyanins are the pink purple colors we see, right? Yes, all the colors, that's the anthocyanin and then the chlorophyll is the green. Those are the two pigments in Tillandsia. This is a clump on a, um, a number of clumps on pieces of wood that have been put together to create an artistic arrangement. We have another, uh, this is a Neorogelia. I started to say Icnea because it looks a lot like the other one, but this is a Neorogelia. And this is a, a Tillandsia, um, it might be a Lindeni. Uh, you can see that the inflorescence is tall and thin and hasn't started to bloom yet. Tillandsia straminia that gets fragrant blue flowers, uh, white and cream flowers, I'm sorry, white, white and cream. It gets fragrant uh, cream and blue flowers, very fragrant. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, it might be a form of fasciculata. And this is a form of uh, probably bergery, but it's the calescent form. You can see it's growing on a stem. Or it might be something else, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. What's that yellow thing there? And this is another form of Tillandsia fasciculata. It's from Mexico. It has yellowish spikes and it hasn't started to flower yet. But as you can see from this uh, talking today, there are many forms of fasciculata. Another Tillandsia fasciculata type. Uh, you can see it's quite different than the others we've seen. It's beautiful. It has quite a bit of color in the leaves. The shape of all of them, the size of all of them is relatively the same, but you can see that the inflorescences are all quite different. This is a Tillandsia uh, capitata. It is, uh, I would call it capitata marron or capitata roja. Lots of color in the leaves. Lots of color in the leaves. It has not flowered. There are two plants in this clump, and who wouldn't love that, right? Stunning. So, Anyway, everybody, that's it for the show here today. South Bay Bromeliad Associates at Rainforest Flora, the 2016 edition. And have a wonderful time wherever you are. Thank you, Paul. We'll see you next year. Next year. We're going to talk about a different class that, in a Bromeliad show. This is a competitive show. And these are called artistic arrangements. And you can really use any item and put any Bromeliads together to create something beautiful and appealing and this is a typical example of different Tillandsias and mini Neoregelias used in this bonsai pot to create a landscape that's stunning and from there we have several different tree branches manzanita tree branches or other types of tree branches that are attached to marble or granite or rock bases and we have miniature Tillandsias. We were talking a lot earlier about the subgenus Tillandsia. One of the other seven, one of the other six, is uh, subgenus Diaphoranthema. 
the Eferantama has all the miniature species, like Spanish moss. And here we have three Talanzi Compilars. Here are two different kinds here. I think these two are the same. So there'll be two different forms of Compilars. These two, and this is a different one here. This is Talanzi Rectangula. And Rectangula is a larger growing species with very stiff leaves. But it's used to wonderful effect here to show what you can do to create small miniature bonsai-like trees. I love these guys. And again, thank you and we'll see you next time.